Hey there, welcome to Agrippa's Laboratory. This is a series that I'm going to run for the original 13 G.I. Joe figures and characters. It took me a while to do, but I finished all 13 of them. Plus one, actually. So I want to go through and use this as just kind of an introduction for it so that you can kind of see what's coming up. Um, this is a general overview of all the 13 that I've finished. And uh, eventually I'm going to do an episode of each one, focusing on each one of the figures. When we talk about the original 13, my source material has always been in the comic book. That's where I was first introduced to G.I. Joe. Um, this was back in, I believe it was 1982 when this came out. This is a cover of the very first issue number one. This issue was the launching point for pretty much all of what we consider the modern day G.I. Joe series. They did launch a cartoon, I believe it was in 83, but I didn't really take that too seriously when I was watching it. It was kind of like almost campy. To me, like I said before, the source material has always been the comic books. This is where I thought where most of the meat of the story and the character building was. Larry Hama, who's the one who created this series, he's the one who wrote all the file cards, so he had a direct influence on how these characters developed and how they were represented in the comic book because, well, he wrote it. When the original 13 were introduced, uh, you can see here there's a picture of all of them on the monitor, but there's one they never really released or even talked about, and that was, if you can just see over on the right-hand side where the hand is covering, there's a character called Shooter. That's the missing 14th original G.I. Joe. Now, years later, they would revisit that and develop a shooter character. I added that one onto my original 13, so it's actually original 14. Now, the comic book and, of course, the cartoons were there to sell a product, and that product was the 1982 release of G.I. Joe action figures, the 3.75-inch action figures. They were competing with Kenner at the time because Kenner kind of ruled the market on that size figure with their Star Wars line. This is from the Sears catalog. I remember it very well when I was a kid going through it and picking out everything I wanted for Christmas and birthdays. Here's the first 10. Uh, you have starting from the left, going over to the right, Grunt, Flash, Stalker, Zap, Scarlet, Snake Eyes, Breaker, Short Fuse, and Rock and Roll. And the rest were represented in vehicles. Here you have Grand Slam. You have the leader of the G.I. Joe team on the right, Hawk, and then, of course, Clutch, who drove the vamp. This is Steeler, the tank commander. He was probably my favorite character of all time because he was the very first one that I got that had the swivel arm action on them. All the other ones I had before that I bought in the stores at the time, they didn't have that. They just had like the 90 degree angle bend on the arms and that was it. So this was the very first one that I got and of course it came with an awesome tank that was battery operated. So Steeler became kind of the star of my G.I. Joe playtimes when I was a kid. They did release a 25th anniversary line of figures, which were pretty true to the originals. If you look at the details, they do represent the originals very well. And this line was a little bit taller, uh, up to four inches tall, and a lot more articulated than the originals. You see they kind of beefed up the details on them, but still kind of stuck to the original source material. You have Breaker, Grand Slam, Snake Eyes, Scarlet, Hawk, Stalker, Grunt, Rock and Roll, and Flash. All right, let's get into some business. First off, General Hawk. I do like the Pursuit of Cobra version that they came out with in the last few years, but I kind of needed to start over and uh, kind of make it so all the characters in my lineup had some similar themes, similar color schemes that would be true to their original, but also be more modernized and not so outlandish like some of the later versions of the G.I. Joe figures. These are kind of real world colors, and I decided to stick to that theme. So this is my General Hawk. Next up is Sergeant Stalker. The ranger of the team, uh, he had several very good versions of him, including the Pursuit of Cobra one, the Renegades, but I felt he needed to have an update. And uh, for that, I went to Marauder's Task Force to get the body for that. Uh, used the Pursuit of Cobra headpiece, did a complete repaint of it. So to me, this is a much better looking stalker than anything that's ever come out. Maybe a biased opinion, but this guy looks pretty badass. Scarlet. She is the counterintelligence of the team, and what I wanted to do with this figure is make her more combat ready and more suitable and practical for the battlefield. So for that, I also went to Marauders for this and tapped their Valkyrie series, which is an incredible line. This one is almost entirely made of Valkyrie parts and Marauder Task Force parts. You can't see it here, but she, she does have a long French braid in the back. 
And of course everybody's favorite snake eyes, the commando. Now I had a couple of choices on doing this. I could have gone all ninja or I could have stayed true to the original, which was the commando looking snake eyes. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to go original version and go commando. So he's got the commando look. He does have a samurai sword there. And uh, of course he's got an Uzi. This one has a silencer and a scope on it. But other than that, this body was from the 2016 release of G.I. Joe's. And uh, I used a Cobra Viper vest and repainted that. I thought it was a great sculpt for the body. So I didn't want to use anything other than that. Awesome articulation on it. You can get him into some great poses. So to me, this is one of the best snake eyes that ever came out. So I decided to use that body and go with it. Breaker is a little bit different looking. He does not have the Marauder's body. And uh, this was actually, I think, my second one that I customized. Uh, the body that was used for him was actually Falcon from the 2016 release, completely repainted. I used 25th anniversary web gear. Uh, the helmet was from Elite Force. And uh, actually the head was from Elite Force too. I cut off of one of the figures and drilled out the middle of it so it could fit on top of the head peg. So this looks like a more modern version of Breaker. And he's got the beard like in the original figure. Short fuse was tough to do because he's kind of a plain looking character. So I had to do something to make him a little bit more interesting. I gave him a combat vest from Marauders. And uh, I did keep his original mortar. So that's actually a mortar from the accessories pack that was released with, I think it was in 1983. Um, other than that, uh, it's a straight repaint from a grunt figure that I had. His head and the helmet are Elite Force. Uh, it was really the only head that I could find that had classes. And that's kind of a trademark for him. Flash looks a little bit more interesting. I took the Rise of Cobra version of Flash and made him more military colors. His fatigues were black and the armor plating was orange. So I kind of toned down that brightness a bit and made it the armor more of red, turned his fatigues into a more military style color. That laser that he has there, that's actually from a hazard biker. Rock and roll, you know, I never had my own rock and roll figures. This was kind of a good moment for me so I can make my own. Um, the body itself comes from the 2016 Outback and I've got a ton of these machine guns so I was able to fix them up with one of those, dry brushed it up so it looked kind of real. Did a complete repaint so his legs are all camoed up. I did glue the ammo belt onto him so it kind of falls over. I didn't want to do the crossover like you see in so many other pictures of rock and roll. The articulation on this figure is pretty good and I always imagined rock and roll as being this kind of big built guy. Grand Slam, the original figure looked identical to Flash. So I kind of wanted to make him look completely different than Flash, have a different look to him. This is almost entirely Marauder parts that I used for this. Um, the body, which was repainted from Marauder parts, the uh, armored vest, um, all that stuff is Marauders. The backpack is actually from 25th Anniversary Joe's and the helmet is from Elite Force. Again, I had to cut that off of a figure and hollow it out so it would fit on the peg. So there is the laser jet pack soldier, Grand Slam. Zap is another one of those figures that was just plain ordinary looking. So I kind of had to make him stand out a bit. I gave him an armored vest so it looked like that it would protect him from any kind of blast. He's got the bazooka from the Steel Brigade force that was repainted. I don't remember where I got that head from, but uh, it was a complete repaint. Now he looks like a figure that stands out. Grunt was never one of my favorites. In fact, he was kind of plain and ordinary and just an infantry guy. To me, in my opinion, this is one of my best figures. Uh, he's got a real modern military look to him. Um, he looks like he knows what he's doing. He looks like he's rigged out. Uh, he's ready to go. Uh, most of this is Marauder parts. The vest was taken from 50th Anniversary Spirit Iron Knife and completely repainted. Uh, the helmet is actually Grunt's helmet from Crimson Strike as well as the head. But everything else is Marauders. Back to Steeler, who like I said before, was one of my favorites. He was actually, I think the first conversion that I ever did, first custom that I did for G.I. Joe guys. And uh, there's not a lot of painting on this one. I do want to go back and repaint him, but uh, I did give him his standard weapon that he came with, um, aside from the tank, and that's the Uzi. I gave him a sledgehammer so he can hammer back on the treads from the tanks when they fall off. But the base of this figure was Shipwreck from the 50th Anniversary. Uh, the helmet and goggles is from General Hawk from the 50th Anniversary figure. And also the web gear. 
but like I said, I do want to go back and repaint this guy and make him so he better fits with the rest of them. Not too much, because I do like his color scheme, but I do think maybe his helmet and his web gear needs to be painted up a little bit more. Clutch the Vamp Driver. Uh, he's had several different looks over the years. Uh, his original version of him in 1982, he did have a beard and had kind of a unique body as compared to the rest of them, at least a unique torso. They pretty much used all the same arms and legs for everybody in that run. I wanted to make him look kind of like a grease monkey. He's got a t-shirt on, raggedy vest, baseball hat. Of course, he's got a headpiece so he, he can communicate to other people while he's driving. This figure was also based on the 50th anniversary of Shipwreck. The head was from Elite Force, so I had to lop it off the figure, drill it out so it could fit on the peg. Of course, everything was repainted. And finally, number 14. They just released a version of Shooter in 2016 with these color schemes. Now, the figure is pretty cool, but the only problem is the articulation on it is absolute crap. Uh, you can't even get her to hold her sniper rifle, which is her main weapon, um, the way you're supposed to hold it when you're shooting. Marauders Task Force released their Valkyrie line, and they had some superior body parts that you could use. Uh, this, the main body part was from the Valkyrie set. I had to switch out the forearms to have longer sleeves. And uh, the head is actually the original for the 2016 release of Shooter. With the new Valkyrie body, she has tons of articulation and she can actually hold her rifle the way she's supposed to and aim it the way she's supposed to and actually look like she's sniping people. So that's awesome. Now some of these I do want to redo and uh, use some of the Marauder parts just because the articulation on them is so good and the sculpting on them is so good. And they're highly modular so you can switch all sorts of stuff, put different equipment on them, make them perfect for what I need them to be. There's the crew hanging out, all of them all together. Like I said before, uh, I will be doing individual videos for each one of these. They won't be as long as this one. And we'll go over the details of everything that I've done on them. Okay, thanks for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please hit the subscribe button. The League of Extraordinary Frontman podcast is released every Monday before 11. Check us out there. Check out the other videos on this YouTube page. And also, check out our Patreon on metalsyndicate-ct.com.